So as I mentioned in the previous video, we usually follow a hierarchical design approach when we are designing very complex hardware. Okay, so first we model simple hardware components, then we will combine these components to make more complex subsystems, and finally we combine these subsystems to build the entire system. Okay, so this is also called a bottom to top design approach because we are starting from the simpler subsystems and building more complex systems. Now in Wedlock, uh, we have a feature called module instantiation, which will be used for implementing this hierarchical design. So that's what we are going to discuss in this video. Now remember, when you are doing the initial design, the hardware design, uh, we usually follow a top to bottom design. We will start from the system level design and go, go down and down and down, so on and so forth. But when we write the model, when we write the code, we start from the simpler circuit, then go towards the top. Okay, so with an example, I will show you. Okay, so our aim is to describe a circuit or model in Verilog, a circuit to add two two-bit binary numbers. Okay, so for example, I have one zero and one one here. When I add them, addition is similar to our decimal number. You add uh, digit by digit zero plus one is one, one plus one is one zero. Okay. So I'm going to call this first number as number A, second number as number B, and this result as the sum. Okay, so these two are our operands, and this is our result. Now, first we are going to uh, design our hardware. Okay, so we'll go for a block-based design, block design approach, and here we are doing a top-down approach. We will start from the top, and we will go down one step at a time. Now, from the topmost, uh, I will abstract my circuit like this. So I will treat it as a black box. I don't know what is inside the black box. Uh, the only thing that I know is it is taking two inputs, A and B, and this is indicating they are two bits wide. Okay, so this is how we draw it in the block diagram. And it is giving one output called S, which is three bits. So basically it takes two input, and gives me the output which is the sum of these two. Now one thing I wanted to mention <coughs> useful in di uh, digital design, uh, whenever you add to n bit numbers, the result can be up to n plus one. In the worst case, the result can be n plus one. For example, here I am adding two, two bit number, so the result can be two plus one, three bits here. That doesn't mean always it will be uh, three bit, but of course, you can always represent it by three bits. For example, if you are adding one zero plus zero one, result is only one one. Okay, so you can represent it using two bits. But in the worst case, uh, like here, it can be up to three bits. It will never become more than three bits. So even if the result is one one, I can represent it using three bits as zero one one. Okay, so it is still possible. Uh, why we are saying it? because uh, unlike uh, software, you cannot sometimes uh, write things in two digits or sometimes in three digits. These are physical circuits. Okay, so when you are designing uh, this output, we need to take the worst case and design it for the worst case. So here some should be three bits because in the worst case, there can be three bits in the output. Even if the result can be represented using two bits, we'll represent it using three bits by putting the most significant bit as zero. So even if the result is one one, we will write it as zero one one, which is a three bit representation. Fine, so this is my abstract view of my circuit. Now, how am I going to build it? So I'm going one step down. Now, uh, one of the basic building blocks, if you want to add numbers in digital circuits is called a half order. Okay, so half order is a circuit which can take two one bit numbers and produce their sum. Okay. Here I have the example, one plus one is one zero. So if I give one here and this one here, at the output I will get one zero. So effectively the output is a two bit sum, okay? because each of them is one bit. So in the worst case, the result can be two bit. Uh, so you can call this entire one zero as the sum, but traditionally, uh, we will call this rightmost bit, which we call as the least significant bit, LSP, as some bit, S, 
and the leftmost bit or more significant bit we call it as the carry okay so when we add 1 plus 1 we have some zero and a carry of 1 that's how we usually say okay effectively the actual overall sum is 1 0 which is decimal 2 so this is our half order circuit now another circuit uh, that is interesting for addition is full adder okay so half adder it takes two one bit numbers and adds them a full adder it takes three one bit numbers and adds it for example if i have one 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 plus one plus one result is one one so here also we are adding three numbers but the result can fit in two bits because in the worst case we are going to add one plus one plus one okay so the largest uh, sum that is going to come out is one one three which requires only two bits for representation so here also these two bits the rightmost bit we will call it as sum the leftmost bit we will call it as carry okay so this is some bit this is carry bit so to distinguish uh, this input c and the output c this i am going to call as c in the name of this input and this uh, output we are calling as c out okay so naming doesn't matter whatever you want you can call it this can be also called c out because some places you will see this is also written c out representing carry out now suppose i have a half adder and a full adder how can i implement this two bit adder see now i'm going one step down in my abstraction so now i know what is inside that black box so this entire box is our two bit adder inside that I have a half adder and I have a full adder and you can see what's really happening. So here you can see A within square bracket 0. This is actually representing the 0th bit of input A. So remember A is 2 input, 2 bit wide input. So the rightmost bit we will represent it as A0. The left bit we will represent it as A1. Okay. So this is again a, a a traditional way of representing the bits and uh, there are particular names for it also this is something called a little india we will see it later don't worry so a is two bits and this is the rightmost bit of a this is the leftmost bit of a similarly b is two bits rightmost bit of b leftmost bit of b so how do you actually add two numbers right you are adding this right two bit first and you will get the first bit of sum and whenever you are adding it, if it produces some carry, you will add that carry with the next two bits and you will write the next bit. So and so forth. That's how we will add in binary, even in decimal also. So here also you can see exactly same thing is happening. I am taking the zeroth bit of A, I am taking zeroth bit of B, I am adding them together, okay, and I will get the rightmost bit for sum. So this is the overall sum output, three bits, it's rightmost bit. So we can write like S of zero, that is coming from this half order. Now, if this addition produces any carry, we will take that carry, give that to the full adder, along with the first bits of A and B. So you can see A of one is going here, B of one is going here. So I'm adding A of 1, B of 1 and the carry from the previous addition. So it will give me two outputs. Okay. So this sum, it will become S of 1 here, that is the second bit. And this C out, it will become S of 2 here, that is the third bit. Thus, we have the complete sum. Fine. So we went one step down. Now, how are we going to build this half adder and full adder? Okay. So half adder and full adder, they will be again built using gates. Okay. So this is what is inside half adder. So this sum is actually an XOR operation between A and B. And this carry is effectively an AND operation between A and B. So how exactly you are getting this circuit, uh, that we will see in the theory part of the digital circuit design course. Uh, once you do that design, you will find out uh, how the circuit can be built using gates. So sum is XOR between A and B and carry is just the AND between A and B. Similarly for full adder, 
the sum is the XOR between these three input A X or B X or C in and carry is A B or A C or B C. Okay, that's how we are getting the carry out. Again, how we get this exact circuit we will see in the theory part. Now again I am going one more level down and here you can see I am replacing my half adder with the XOR gate and AND gate and full adder with my XOR gate AND gates and the OR gate. So this is the lowest design, the gate level design. Now if you like you can go further down, uh, you can find out how each gate is built using transistor, then you can describe each gate using transistor also if you prefer. Now in Wedlock, again we have different levels of abstraction. So now we are doing something called a gate level design, gate level abstraction. Uh, we are taking gates as our basic building blocks. But Wedlock it supports transistor also as a building block. So you can have transistor level modeling also where you will design each circuit using uh, transistor. At transistor level you will describe each circuit but uh, practically uh, nowhere you will see it. Okay? It's rarely used. Practically in most cases uh, the smallest modeling level will be at gates. So we will stop at gate level and this completes our design phase. So we did top to bottom design approach. Now we have to actually write the Wedlow code which is describing this hardware. For that we will go bottom to top approach. So we will start from this bottom using our half hour transfer ladder using gates then we will combine them to build our entire circuit. So that's what we are going to do. So let's go to the coding. While writing the code we will follow bottom to top. So let's start from our half order. So as we discussed in the previous video this is how we will write it half order. We have two inputs A and B, so let's write input A and input B and two outputs, output sum and output carry. The sum is the XO between A and B. Right, so we can take an XOR gate, sum is the output, A and B are the inputs. Now carry is the output of an AND gate, so we can take C here, A and B as input. So half order is done, so save it somewhere, so let me keep it in a new folder. Uh, overall we are designing this 2-bit adder, okay. so inside that Let's keep our half adder. Now same way we can design the full adder also. So we have full adder, we have A, B and C in as our output, S and C out as our output. So sum is again an output of an XOR gate, so S, A, B and C in. Now C out, if you see, this is how we need, okay. So it's an output of an OR gate, which takes three inputs from these three AND gates, okay. So we can input three AND gates and we need some wires coming from this AND gate and going to this OR gate. Okay, then only we can design it. So let's take AND gate. Now well, let me try to build this AND gate who's taking input from A and C in. And his output is this wire. So that wire we need to declare first. So wire, let's call AND1 out or something. So AND1 and one out and inputs are A and C in. Similarly, we can have the other AND gates also. And two, 
and 3 this is a and b this can be b and c in now finally we have the or gate the output from or gate is c out and input to the OR gate are these three wires and one out and two out and three out okay so we are done with the full adder also so we have done with this we have done with this now our next challenge is to combine these two things and build our full 2-bit add. Okay, so this is where we are going for the hierarchy. So we have built these simple systems. Now we have to use them to build this more complex system. Okay, so initial steps are exactly same. So we have module 2-bit adder. Okay, so here we will see something new. So if you look at the two-bit adder, this abstract view, what I can see is it takes two inputs and each input is two bits wide. Okay. So previously we were simply writing uh, input A. So if you just write like that, it is representing this is a one bit wide. Okay. This is a single wire which is going as the input. Now if you want more than one bit, the width you have to explicitly specify. Okay. So if you want two bits, we need to write one down to zero. Okay. So this should be read as one down to zero. This is indicating this input is two bits wide. So if you need three bits wide, you need to write two down to zero. If you want 32 bit, you need to write 31 down to zero. Okay. So and so forth. So this is the syntax input width name of the port same way we have the next input 1 down to 0 b and from the abstract view i have only one output called s which is 3 bits okay so output 2 down to 0 s and end module now if you look at this block design we can find out our 2 bit adder as per this one is actually not directly composed of gates instead it is composed of these two subunits okay full adder and half adder that means we need to use this full adder and half adder inside this two bit adder okay to model our complete two bit adder we need to so called instantiate okay so this is what we call as module instantiation so basically module instantiation means you use one wedlock module within another module so there are certain syntax for doing it okay so that's what we are going to see now okay so first what you need to is for example i need to use the half order inside this module right so you go to half order and copy the module name as well as the interface and bring it here okay now the syntax for instantiation is as follows so first you need to write the module which you want to instantiate which is half order followed by something called an instance name so some name for example we can write ha or you can write half order itself no issue so why module instance name is important because in some cases you will see within one module you will have to instantiate another module multiple times okay in our this particular case that is not there for example if you are using a, a three bit adder what you need is a half adder here a full adder here followed by another full adder which is taking the next two bits okay and that's output its output will be also going as the final sum so in that case we will need two full adder within this 3 bit adder now the tool EDA tool it needs some way to distinguish between these two full adders so each of the full adder should be given a unique name that name we call as the instance name if 
fine. So here, even if you have a single module, we will give a instance name. So this is the module name, the actual module name, half order. Then we need the instance name and the rules for instance name is exactly the rules for giving any other name, port name or module name. You can have alphanumerics, you can have underscore, but should not start with a number. But if you have instances of the same module, multiple instances of the same module, each instance name should be unique. That is the rule. Next, you need to connect these inputs and outputs of these instances. Okay. Now, there are two ways of doing it. Uh, some of the terminologies I am taking from VHDL because I don't know in VLOG whether these things have special names. For example, here you can see half order, it has an input called A, which is this guy. Okay. Now, when you instantiate it, the ports or the input outputs of the original module, we are going to call them formal ports. So this A, B, S and C, they are all called formal ports. Now you have to connect these formal ports with uh, some other signals. Okay, so let's do it. Now for doing it, you can delete this input and output. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. And that is the main advantage if we write them in different line, I can simply remove them together and in front of each port name, you need to prefix a dot, okay. So we need to write dot a dot b dot s dot c. Now you can write them in the same line also, no issues, but uh, it looks better if we write it in multiple lines. After that, we need this parenthesis and within parenthesis, you need to specify where this A is actually connected to. Okay, So this is again called formal port. Whatever you write within the bracket, we call it as actual port. Actual port. So this is formal port. Whatever you write here is actual port. So let's see for the half order, this is his A input. Where is it connected? This A is connected to the zeroth input of the input operand, first operand, this capital A. Make sense? So we have this A here. His zeroth bit should be connected to this A. So in the bracket, we write it as A square bracket zero, like this. So this indicates zeroth bit of this A. Now, uh, there is no confusion for tools whether this A is different from this A or whether they are same. Your actual name and formal name can be same, no issues. So it's perfectly fine if you have an A here and an A here also. So where is this B connected to? This B is again from the block. It is connected to B of zero. Okay, so we can connect it to B of zero. Now this sum, which is the output from the half order, is going as the zeroth bit of the final sum. So here we can write s of 0 and this is the carry from the half order. Where is that carry? That is not going outside. That carry is going as the input to the full adder. Okay, so we need a wire using which we can connect it to the full adder. That we will do. Okay, so before doing it, let's bring our full adder also and follow the same step to instantiate the full adder. So full adder let me call it FA. Let me remove all these. Let's put bracket. So his A input is connected to the first bit. B is also connected to first bit. His C in, okay, that is this one, is connected to the output of the half order. So what we can do? We can put a wire here. Let's call this wire as C out or something. And let's declare a wire C out and connect that wire here. So this basically models you took a wire and you connected that wire between this C and this C out. Sorry, my mistake, not C out. This C is going to his C in input. Now his S and C out 
you can see they are going as the two other bits of the final sum. So this sum is the second bit, this C out is the third bit of the sum. So here we can write S of 1, here we can write S of 2. So S of 0 is coming from here for this S, 1 is coming from here, 2 is coming from here. So that completes our module instantiation. Okay, so this is one instantiation, this is one instantiation, and this is the instance name, this is the module name, these are formal ports, these are actual ports. Now when you are writing code, you don't have to know all these terminologies and all. Why they are important? Because when we later use it for simulation or for implementation, and if there are any error, the simulator will be saying like in the so and so formal port, so and so issue, or so and so instance, there is so and so, so issue. So unless you know these terminologies, it will become difficult to debug it. Okay, so that's why we are looking at the terminology. Now there is one way of instantiating, there is another way also. So this is called uh, named instantiation. Another style is also there which is called positional instantiation. Again those terms are actually coming from VHD, I really don't know in Vidlog do they use this term. So there what you will do is if you want to instantiate half order, okay, first part is same. And you will not write any formal ports. You will list only the actual ports here. Okay, so you simply write a of zero in the same line or multiple lines. Let me write same lines here. B of zero, S of zero, and C of. It will just look like this. Okay, only actual ports, no formal ports. So this is called positional instantiation. So here what it means is whatever actual port you write first, it is connected to the first port of the half order. So this A0 is connected to this A, this B0 is connected to this B, so on and so forth. Okay. Based on position, uh, the tool will, whatever tool we are using, he will automatically find out. So this is also supported, but uh, a good coding practice is to use this named instantiation, I would say, because this is highly error prone. Okay, In this case, if you swap A and B, nothing will happen. But there are cases where you change the order or if you later find like you need to add one more port and if you add something in between here and if you don't do the same thing here, we will run into trouble. Okay, So this is better. It is always better to go for this named instantiation. Now a few more things about named instantiation. If you are using named instantiation, the order in which you write here, it really doesn't matter. So here I wrote A, B, S, C. You can perfectly write uh, B, A, S, C also because it's describing same circuit. Okay. What matters is where the actual port is connected. Okay, where is the actual port connected? So this A of 0 is connected to this A. So that you can write it in any order, no issues. Now when you look at the instantiation uh, with the software counterpart, software programming, some people they will compare your modules with the concept of classes and these instances as concepts of object. Okay, it looks similar, right? So you have one module and from that one module you can create multiple instances of that module and you can instantiate. As I mentioned, if you want one more full, full ladder, you can instantiate one more full ladder, which is similar to you have one class and from one class you are creating multiple objects. Okay, So uh, the idea looks similar, even the name instance uh, looks similar, but uh, what is exactly happening is totally different. Uh, from software and hardware. Okay, So here you are actually modeling your hardware using these smaller components. In software uh, you are creating new copies of the same class in the memory. But again basic idea looks similar. This half order like your class describe the overall name of the module, the interface to your module and what the module does, same like your class. And this instance it is like an abstract view of this class 
and if you want to use a module within another module you will have to create an instance of that module similar to creating an object from a class okay so yeah they look similar again the concepts uh, may be again adopted from software development okay so that's it so once we have done with coding we can just go ahead and save it Let's call it two, two bit adder. Okay, and uh, one thing I forgot to mention, Verilog, it is a case sensitive HDL language. Okay, those who have used VHDL before, VHDL is a case insensitive HDL language. That is not the case with Verilog. So, wire C out and wire C out and wire C out, they are all different. Okay. They're all unique wires, but like in C program, uh, this is highly discouraged to use same identifiers within the same module. Okay, it's a bad design practice. So stick to names which are logical instead of just changing the letters. But as I mentioned before, it is possible your actual names and formal names they are matching, or module names and instance names are matching even case wise that is perfectly fine because you cannot always insist uh, they should be different because they might be designed by different engineers so it is possible they give the same name but within the same module uh, whenever you are giving names try to give unique logical names okay so the simulation we will do in the next video and we will check whether our circuit is really working or not thank you